Before you start the class, will you explain your teaching method and policy in contrast with the present Japanese educational system and English? Also, I want you to compare and contrast the Japan bashing and mall hammering, please. Who are we talking about? Okay, so before I get into it, I should say that I am very well aware that these shows were from a different time and this was the standard depiction. However, I want to still laugh at this shit because it's fucking bad and I just honestly couldn't believe my eyes. There are a few anime that I found that I'll be talking about. All of them cover cross-dressing in various degrees. Pretty much each one of these are about fetishizing men who like to dress feminine. It's clear that that's what these are. I'm more curious at looking at these examples and seeing how through the lens of the writers this is how they see LGBT people and people who cross-dress. Just basically anybody that's not heteronormative I guess. When I first got into anime I was a little young thing and this was basically my first exposure to people who cross-dressed and or identify outside the norm. At that moment her father came home. For me shifted the tranny bar. For me shifted the tranny bar. From me shifted the tranny bar. Tranny. So obviously not off to a great start. Look, I get it. This type of stuff exists. I just kind of want to explore what does this stuff have to say behind all of the spectacle. One thing that is consistent about all of these shows is how much of a piece of shit the main character is. Usually from the guy's perspective, they are always ogling the girls, imagining them in sexual scenarios. That's basically the crux of whatever's going on. However, the ignorance definitely varies and gets worse as each of them goes on. So let's start with the first one. This is probably the most tame of the ones we'll be talking about and the one with the least criminal activity, but there are some questionable moments. I shouldn't even have to say it at this point, but all of the characters in this vary on the level of being a piece of shit. This guy, Hajima Akira, is running from gang members because he fucked around with the boss's daughter. He moves around aimlessly not really caring and only wants money so he can move out of the country. His late father has an inheritance and the butler, I guess, has access to it and will give him a million yen if he takes the place of the English teacher who is a woman and his sister. And she's, I guess, brokenhearted about her breakup with her boyfriend. Doesn't really play any role so it doesn't really matter. Well, as far as the plot, there really isn't much to say about it. We get shots where the guy is sitting in a chair with a very short skirt. <laughs> So, um, yeah. So fast forwarding, Akira is seen pissing into a lake where a student is nearby. Worried that he saw, Akira takes that as an opportunity to kick the student into the lake where he can't swim because he said that he wants to be dead. Like I said, the main characters in this are all pieces of shit. Instead of using the stick he has to pull him to safety, he then proceeds to try to let him drown. The other delinquents of the school are just watching him from afar. As the student is about to drown, Akira finds out that he didn't see his dick so he decides to help him and I just, I can't. Later the character is seen at a bar sitting like this and being a fucking piece of shit again. We've got some bad English here which was hilarious. Hey bitch, I'm stuck here in the back hall and get your shit out and clean up. You are my host up. Want me to murder you buggy dick, huh? What are we talking about? Later, Akira is seen terrorizing another student because someone threw an egg at him on the first day. Then the show gives a stupid sob story for the student so we feel bad for him, but Akira still beats the shit out of him for some reason. I don't know if this is also playing into stereotypes of trans women slash cross-dressers being violent. I feel like this stereotype only just becomes more and more prevalent. So anyway, let's uh, move on because I am just about ready to ram my head into a fucking wall. So in class there's a student that I think it's implied that he's hard and that he wants to go to the nurse's office so he can ogle some D cups. His words, not mine. I just even, I can't with this. 
So he takes the student to the nurse's office where he ends up laying on the bed with his legs spread open. I love when they show close-ups of this because they clearly, the character clearly has a dick. They keep making sure to emphasize that the character definitely has one, as we've seen so far. But in these specific scenarios, it seems that his dick has completely disappeared so he can look like a cis woman. And it all goes into the fetish of knowing that this is a guy, but none of the physical features of it being a man are present. I should also mention that all of the men, when they're disguised as women, are voiced by women to play into the fetish even more, obviously because it would just be really distracting and wouldn't be as attractive. So Akira pulls the student into bed with him, where they are caught by the school nurse, Akira's next victim. Our main character is next seen trying to watch girls on the swim team, likely the students, just in case I haven't already stated that these are kids, but thank god the classes are cancelled. He does go in and sniff someone's bathing suit, only for it to be revealed that it's an old woman, because old women are gross, am I right? So his sister ends up leaving the country to solve whatever issue it is she had. I couldn't really remember, to be honest, and I really couldn't be bothered. So Akira has to keep staying as his sister, in her place until she comes back, I guess? Later, he and the nurse go out for drinks where basically guys prey on them because every man, you know, is just a fucking predator. Akira, as a woman, and the nurse beat the shit out of the two men that tried to take advantage of him, and that's how it ends. Yet, yeah, all of these end with a very vague conclusion because it's like they want you to go read the story that it's based off of, so that's what you get. Get used to that. Well, that was horrible, but we still have two more that I found that are just as horrible to get through. Jesus Christ. Futari Garashi is a, um, well, it's something. So what's this about? Well, we've got the cross-dressing, don't you worry about that, but we also have a grown man that is attracted to a 15-year-old boy who is cross-dressing as a girl. Futari Garashi's plot if you can even call it that, is about a mid-twenties Kenji Aoyama, an aspiring erotic manga artist who is expecting his friend's brother to stay with him as a roommate because he wants help with the rent. However, the person that shows up to the door is his brother, but also his brother Hikari Sato that is dressed as a girl and becomes Kenji's roommate. This is literally how they have the boy describe himself as a girl, and it's just uncomfortable comfortable hearing the boy say his voice hasn't broken yet and also how he has the adult man feel his crotch area to confirm it. However, they also gender her with she, which makes me more confused because they also keep referencing that it's she's they are a boy. Because this young boy looks like the girl of Kenji's dreams, that of course means that Hikari will be sexually harassed and assaulted, and that will be seen as charming because the protagonist is so attracted to the femme presenting 15 year old boy. Yes, I just have to hammer that in. I really feel like fucking throwing up. Of course, the 15 year old is very comfortable with their sexuality, so they have no problem posing in sexy positions for the adults. As we can see, the entire anime is just an excuse to find cross dressing men attractive and fetishized. So the man is constantly trying to get in the 15 year old's pants and the only thing that really they can think of is scenarios like that. One thing you'll notice with these anime very quickly is how they are there to fetish fuel and nothing else really. Now thankfully for my sanity these are only eight minutes segments with mostly nothing happening but sexual fantasies with the 15 year old boy. So there's even less to say than the last one, other than the adult being attracted to the 15 year old. This apparently has 36 episodes, but there are only 7 here that are actually translated, and I felt relieved by that fact. I feel so gross after watching this. There's not much to this aside from the main character trying to attack the child like I've said multiple times, and of course the girl is also depicted as aloof and just sleeps exposed in front of the man so we can have a long scene of the man examining the child's body. Overall, I know that this is just jerk-off material, but even still, I really hate this shit. Why do you have to bring children into it, and why do you have to degrade an entire, like, group of 
people in order to fetishize whatever it is you're doing. I feel like it upsets me more because animation and time was wasted on this, honestly. By far the best thing to come out of Futari Garashi is the opening. I actually really dig this. Unfortunately, there isn't a full version of it, and I can't seem to find anything other than a live recording, so that fucking sucks. But either way, it's just awful. And let's just move on to the last one. Oh boy, Okama Report. This one is pretty rough, so just strap in for this one. Although we have seen illegal activity in the other two, this one is just as fucking bad and creepy. First, let's start with the story. The main character character that we're following is named Okama, which is basically a derogatory word for a gay or effeminate man, and I believe for men who also cross-dress, so we're already off to a great start. I'm sure our main character will handle having the last name with maturity, right? So he goes to a drinking party and gets drunk beyond belief to the point where his friends dress him up like a woman and take pictures of him. Fast forward, he's shown a picture of himself, and of course our main character is a moron, so he thinks that the man in the picture is a hot woman. I can't help but feel like this taps into autogynephilia a little bit, which is basically a fetish for a man where he's attracted to himself dressed as a girl. It's also been used as a derogatory term for trans women, and it just goes back to just portraying them as being attracted to themselves as women because it's all about sexuality and nothing else, which just completely demeans the experience of being trans and so that just makes this entirely worse. So when Okama finds out that he is the girl, he starts working at a gay bar where he meets a girl that he's attracted to. From here, he pretends to be a girl named Catherine to befriend this woman, basically preying on her, finding out details about her life so he can use it in a way to hook up with her. We also have deception, which is another stereotype where trans women lure straight cis men to have sex with them. Man, this really checks off every outdated stereotype ever, doesn't it? There's a point where the main character learns about the girl's boyfriend and then seeks him out as Catherine and frames him to make it look like he was cheating, in the most cartoonish way possible, obviously, so he can have her for herself and have a chance with her when she's vulnerable and all of this. There are other characters in this that also play into the stereotypes of trans women sexually harassing the cis male character because, I mean, they're just secretly male with a lust for straight cis men, right? There's a part of this where one of the cross-dressers at the bar clearly supposed to be more passing, so the men jerking off to this can uh, decipher between the sexy cross-dressers and the ones that are just supposed to be yucky, big, muscly men. These men that cross-dress also just don't groom themselves, so there's just body hair everywhere. It's obscene. They wear really tight dresses, so everything is exposed all the time, and we can see everything every time a character gets hard. I swear to god if I drank every time one of these characters actually had a boner, I'd probably be dead. So I failed to mention that this has three parts and I had to sit through three 45 minute segments of this bullshit. So in episode three, Okama's friend comes to stay with him and finds out about the girl that he's been interested in. And he's just as much of a pervert as Okama, probably even more so. I think the point was to make him so much of a fucking disgusting pig that in comparison Okama looks like Jesus. So outside the bar one night, Miki, the girl that he has been interested in, is getting harassed by men. Of course, another fantasy for men. Then the friend shows up outside of the bar and rescues her like these anime tend to love to do. Once he lays eyes on her, he immediately becomes this ogling oaf that gets hard just at the sight of this woman. There are actually a few scenes that I want to highlight because I couldn't make this shit up of I fucking tried. So the main character gets his head stuck in a wall and one of the other cross-dressing men that work at the bar. Again, I can't be bothered with names at this point because it doesn't matter. Anyway, this character is so in love with Okama that they've been trying to sabotage the main character's relationship with the girl that he's been preying on. So what they do to this person whose head is stuck in a wall, just let me show you.
Yeah, um, SA is running rampant in all of these, but what did you expect when women are just an object to these types of writers? Okay, so the friend is so fucking horny that he needs to beat it right next to his friend. And then I swear to God, I'm not making this up when he um, ejaculates into Okama's eyelids. I was laughing so hard when this happened because I was watching it on two times speed and it just makes it so much funnier with the sound effects. But like, it's hilarious because he's also, when he wakes up, his eyelids are like stuck. I just, I can't believe that a person wrote this. Okay, this other scene where his friend punches him and um, as the girl is walking by, I guess, he grabs her skirt and pulls it down. She runs away screaming and the friend is standing there like a fucking caveman acting like uncontrollably like in lust. The only thing getting me through this is how hilariously bad this is that I can't even believe this is reality. I can't even be that upset because because of this, even though the deep-rooted transphobia and homophobia is very much there. I also can't get past the point that the friend saw the girl coming and completely calculated this out to make sure that he would somehow pull the skirt down so he could get a look at her fucking underwear. I understand that they're working with a limited budget, however, what the fuck is this? This is probably one of the worst art style choices I have ever seen. Look how empty and expressionless they are. It's really kind of unnerving at points. So the gorilla friend, I guess, is established to be a raging homophobe and the cross-dressing man that is in love with Okama goes over to his apartment where the friend is. I love how the anime tries to depict our main character as a hero because he cares enough about the person that literally essayed him to protect them from his homophobic and transphobic friend. Jesus Christ, please let this end already. So he and Miki show up there where the cross-dresser already handled the situation because cross-dressers and trans people have nothing more than, you know, sexual lust and are just sexual deviants. So apparently the cross-dressing bar worker knew how to tame the beast man. So then it's revealed that after this encounter that the friend is also a cross-dresser now and works at the bar. Basically this is how it ends. Again another vague ending where the character decides to stay as Catherine. Fucking hell. I don't even think that it was ever revealed to the main character's love interest that he was cross-dressing the whole time. At least here. So maybe it's continued in the manga it's based on or whatever but it just ends so vaguely. Deception is huge when it comes to these. They love it. The guy being in disguise as a woman to move closer to their target or the men being disguised as women that deceived the straight man that wanted to sleep with them. It's all at the expense of people who identify outside of the hetero norm as if all people that cross dress or identify as something other than cis are only doing this to satiate their sexual desires. I fucking hate this trope so much. Well, that was just exhausting. I know that these stereotypes still exist in spaces to be fetishized, but I know that there are also great representations of cross-dressing and being trans. It's just those things don't have mainstream appeal. I honestly hope that we can keep working towards a place where these stereotypes about trans people and cross-dressing die. I guess history is how we learn to get better at this. Anyway, that's all I've got. See you in the next one. Pim, the world we live in stresses me out, dude. Really? Why? Just like never-ending constant chaos. No, it, it never lets up. I hate it. I, it's oh, not good. Okay.